Dirkjan Ochtmann takes us on a ride to the future of Rust server side to learn what async fate we will have to await. Meanwhile, let us rust far and wide. Better? Yes. Um, it's not just about a server side, it's a client side as well, because you got to have two sides to any connection. So um, I'm here to talk about QUIC. It's just a new protocol that IETF is currently working on. Um, first, a little bit about me. Um, so I've been using Rust for about two years in my spare time mostly, um, or really only. Um, and um, I've had a lot of fun, and I think Rust is great. I, I believe in the future of doing things in Rust rather than other languages. So um, I got interested in this protocol that uh, they're developing. Um, it's called Quick UDP Internet Connections, or just Quick. And basically, the the large companies are working on internet stuff. This started at Google, but uh, a number of companies are working on it now, and are in the working group together trying to standardize it. Um, and what they want to do in the end is to replace TCP. And TCP is sort of this core part of the internet stack. You might have heard, you, you might just think of it as TCP and IP, um, where basically you shove data bytes into a stream and you get it out on the other side. So what it's trying to do is a reliable in-order delivery um, across the internet. And this has been working for about 40 years, and there have been some extensions to make it better. But uh, it turns out we have learned a few things about doing internet scale things in 40 years. So they think they can do better than TCP, even with extensions. And um, this started at Google in 2012, and in uh, 2016 they went to the IETF. Um, hopefully by the end of the year it will be standardized, um, though there is still an, a number of things to be fixed. And recently, there was, this week, there was a proposal which might slow it down for, I think, nine months, they estimated. Um, so who we'll knows we'll know when it comes really to, uh, to a standard. But um, I think as forward-looking people are in the Rust community, um, let's look at this protocol that will, at some point, be part of our lives. Um, so. These are sort of the three sections of the talk that I'm going to do today. First, I want to talk a little bit about the problem, or one of the main problems that we're trying to solve with Quick, and that is head of line blocking. And I've tried to make an animation to make this a little bit clearer. So you see data flowing from the application through the transport layer to the network. And at some point, a packet is going to go get dropped in the network side. And the packets that come after that, after that packet have to wait to be delivered back to the application. So as you can see, they get buffered in the transport layer, and then once the packet is retransmitted, then they can be delivered to the application. Um, and in many cases in practice, actually what you're delivering over the transport layer or over the network is not just one stream of bytes, but is multiple streams of bytes interleaved. Um, so you're doing multiplexing. And in that case, it might be nice to actually take some of the parts that are not directly affected by the packet loss and be, be able to deliver them to the application layer before the retransmission is uh, fixed. Um, so in general, the quick goals, these are the goals that are as stated by the working group charter, um, to minimize latency, both in the connection establ establishment as well as in the data transfer. Um, as you might know, TCP connections are a bit slow to set up often because you have to do multiple round trips. And if you also do TLS, that's even worse. Um, to provide multiplexing, so that's sort of wedging together multiple streams by taking chunks of each stream and uh, serializing them into a single stream. But with Quick, it uh, better understands how you're doing multiplexing so the application layer can influence that and it allows you to get rid of this head of line blocking problem. Um, changes limited to path endpoints. So what they're saying is um, 
they don't want the whole internet to have to change to be able to do quick. So what they do is they use UDP. UDP is sort of the simple, simple sibling to TCP, which basically means you take an IP packet, you stuff two port numbers, a checksum and a length field in it, and then you just shove it on the wire. Um, so that means you don't get in order or reliable, but you can do this sort of more fine-grained stuff and leave the in order reliability to the something closer to the application layer, which also means it's easier to evolve over time because you're not dependent on, for example, most people running TCP stacks from the kernel, which are hard to upgrade. Um, they want to do multi-path support built in. It's also possible with TCP, but what they do there is to they sort of layer an extra thing on top of TCP, um, which makes it less efficient uh, with uh, quick that's built in. They do better error correction, so they, they try to make the most of uh, error robustness um, against problems from the packet. Um, also with quick security is built in, so they use uh, they reuse a lot of the stuff that's in from TLS, although they rely on TLS 1.3, um, but it's always there, unlike with TCP where you get TCP and then you can layer TLS on top of it. So even though these days it's getting more and more common to just use, always use TLS on TCP, with Quick it's built in and that's nice. Um, and what they're saying is uh, we want to rapidly do development and testing so it will not just be this version of Quick um, and then coast along for a long while, um, but they expect that there will be revisions of Quick so there's stuff like version negotiation built in and uh, that makes it possible to at some point move the ecosystem forward without having large flag days. Um, Quick is split up currently in six documents. That's uh, nice because it makes it a bit easier to get to the parts you find interesting or to maybe at some point do more modular protocol implementations. Uh, first one is invariance, so they try to document stuff that cannot change across versions, so that uh, that helps if you're doing good version negotiation or you want to try to be robust against future protocol changes. Transport is like the core protocol logic, so it has all the stuff about the handshake and how the um, data is transferred. Recovery is all about loss detection and congestion control, so um, if packets get lost, how do you detect it? What do you do when you detect it? Uh, that sort of thing. Or if the flow of the network is restricted, um, what's the best way to handle that? And all of, a lot of these algorithm are, algorithms are described in the spec specification. Uh, TLS, so that is how is that promise of security um, realized. So what they do is uh, use the TLS spec that's already out there, uh, which we have implementations for, but make it, uh, use it in a slightly more efficient way because it can integrate into the quick uh, layer. And then in order to do HTTP on top of quick, um, there's two other things, so QPAC. Um, you might know that in HTTP2 there's something called HPAC, which is a way of trying to do a binary sort of compression encoding of the headers, uh, both the header names and header values. So you can do, be more efficient at the HTTP data transfer, um, making it almost look like some really uh, smartly encoded binary protocol. And for quick, they have slightly different needs. So um, they ha also have to do a different encoding of the compression scheme. And then HTTP, two, HTTP is the sort of the same thing uh, where it's really based on HTTP2 and it's quite similar, but a lot of the details are, si are different to accommodate uh, the quick uh, semantics. So sort of this core idea in quick is that of streams. So uh, I had to think of some nice analogy. Um, and what uh, the core concept is that you have any an, an, uh, hardly, hardly limited number of streams. You can have, I think, two to the power 62 or something. Um, so it should be enough for most people. Um, and they have four different types of streams. 
Um, streams are either client-initiated or server-initiated, and they are either um, bidirectional or unidirectional. So that allows you to make some optimizations with how you handle those streams, um, and you can, and that's used in the protocol. And this is sort of encoded by having the least significant bits of the stream type uh, represent these stream types. Um, uh, a short bit about recovery. So there are the differences with TCP are well explained in the specification. So whereas TCP conflates the order of transmission of packets and the order of delivery of the packet contents to the application, these are separate concepts in QUIC, which means that uh, the QUIC packet numbers are just representative of the transmission order, but the order in which data is delivered to the application relies on data offsets that are per stream. So this again helps you do uh, prevent head of line blocking type problems. And um, because you have a very clear ordering in your packet numbers in terms of transmission order, that also makes it easier to detect packet loss. TCP actually allows you to, in some cases, go back on acknowledging packets, um, which is called reneging. Um, this could happen, for example, if you, uh, you lose some packets and you buffer a bunch of packets after that, um, and then the receiver is allowed to at some point say, uh, this packet loss thing is taking too much time, I don't want to buffer these packets anymore. Um, but as it turns out, there was a paper that showed that this doesn't actually function in practice. It's used only rarely, but it causes substantial complexity uh, on both sides. So this was dropped from QUIC. And if you receive a packet, you just have to, it's your responsibility now. Um, really, only if you ACK it. Um, and there's a more efficient way of doing X in QUIC so that um, you can um, more reliably convey as a receiver to the sender what you have received and what you have not received, making it uh, clearer what packets need to be retransmitted by the sender. Finally, there is an explicit correction for delayed acknowledgement. So as a sender, you might, well, as a receiver, you might well choose not to act to send acknowledgements directly for any package that you receive because, for example, it, it's more efficient to group acknowledgements. Um, but that makes it harder for the sender to determine the round trip time because um, you're fiddling with the timing of the X. So in QUIC, um, the, the delay between receiving the packet and sending the acknowledgement for it can be ex is made explicit so that you can reliably estimate the round trip time for our packets. So TLS is just TLS 1.3 handshake uh, with a custom extension. Um, the extension is used to announce transport parameters. So this is things like, um, as a receiver, you announce how much data you can hold in your buffers until you've acknowledged it, or how many streams you allow to be open. So this really also makes it possible to scale down. Implementations do not need a lot of memory. Um, and the nice part of doing this in the TLS 1.3 handshake is that both um, you get, you don't have to do an extra round trip after the handshake, plus you get authentication from the handshake. So it's clear that these are actually, you cannot mess with the transport parameters in flight. Um, after the handshake, um, you use the um, negotiated cipher suite and secrets from TLS, but you don't actually use the TLS protocol anymore. So instead of wrapping every um, data transport stuff in TLS records and TLS messages, that doesn't happen. You just encrypt your packet payloads with um, the handshake or the stuff that you got from the handshake. Um, not sure if the slides are gonna come back this time. Doesn't look like it. Um, yeah, and so this week there was an uh, announcement. Um, it looks like the Quick working group has design teams, so that seems like similar as in the Rust community.
And uh, the design does, there's a Stream Zero design team. Stream Zero is the stream that carries the TLS um, handshake and, and further messages. Um, and it looks like the Stream Zero design team has a lot of ideas about how to improve Stream Zero or that there are still problems with the current design of Stream Zero. That is what might cause a bunch of extra delays because this now means that all the TLS implementations, so OpenSSL or in my case, Russell's, um, will have to be updated to support that kind of stuff. My next slide is about quick HTTP. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, quick HTTP is negotiated as a application layer during the application layer protocol nego negotiation that's part of the TLS handshake that works today. It's used for HTTP2 as well, for example. Um, in this case, you just say, you can say just HQ to say, hey, I support uh, HTTP quick over quick. You can also do things like saying, I support HQ on this particular port. So your regular um, HTTP1 web server can in its TLS handshake say, if you go to this other port, you can talk to me over quick. And it can also mention the quick version supported. So that, that's uh, quite nice and prevents you from having to do more round trips to do all that, figure all of that out. And as I mentioned, uh, quick HTTP is built on HTTP2, so it's really similar semantically, but a lot of the bits on the wire are slightly different. Um, I have a interoperability matrix. It's a really nice visual <laughs> with uh, colored cell cells and uh, a lot of letters on it. So really what they do in the working group is, um, you might know that the IETF um, is based around the motto, rough consensus and running code. And this really represents the running code part of it. So I think there are like uh, 15 people or groups that are trying to implement quick. And um, this matrix has 15 uh, clients on the, uh, on the left side and 15 servers on the top side. And then for each combination, you can track um, what's working and what's not. And um, it's interesting to see the organizations that are participating in this. So there's, an, there's a Mozilla implementation, there's a fake Facebook implementation called MVFT. You might have heard their motto, move fast and break things. Um, there's, I think Google has an implementation, Cloudflare, Apple, um, and pretty much all of these are in C or C++. I think there's one in Go and one in Node.js, and then there's two in Rust. Uh, one of which is mine. Um, so I'm back to the table of contents. Second sec section is on the Rust ecosystem. Um, so that's basically stuff that I used in my implementation. Um, first thing that I used is Russell's. So uh, big thanks to Joe for making it and also supporting uh, me with code reviews while I was putting some um, quick specific stuff in there. So there's one, the transport parameters extension that I implemented. Um, and I have some extensions traits added to the client session and server session type um, with which you can, during the setup or construction of a session type, you can pass in your own parameters uh, as just as a byte fact. And then there's another method um, that you can get the peers parameters with after the handshake. And while I was in there, I also implemented support for the SSL keylog file uh, feature. So this is a feature where um, you can specify an environment variable and that will dump the uh, TLS session secrets to a file, which is really useful when you want to debug what's happening in your TLS connection. And this is, for example, supported by browsers and uh, NSS and OpenSSL. And Russell's didn't have support yet, but it does now if you use master. Now I can see my own slides anymore. So <laughs> it makes it even harder. <laughs> Who 
get you back to the slides. Okay. Um, so then we'll fix it. Good. <laughs> I uh, still have the recording, so mm -hmm. it's a good call. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'll just try to go on from memory for a little bit. Um, so I also used... Uh, <laughs> that makes my practice actually worthwhile. <laughs> there it is. Um, yeah, so Ring and WebPKI. PKI. I keep pronouncing it wrong. Um, these are things by Brian Smith that sort of underlie Russell's as well. And it's really great to be able to use that stuff also because we, I know that's boring SSL is used there. So it's, I think it's really trustworthy stuff, even though it might not be as mature as your open SSL. But in terms of security, I'm not sure which horse I would bet on. Um, and so uh, if you get a handshake complete in Russell's, then there's a method you can call that's, uh, I think it's called get negotiated cipher suite, and that basically gives you access to all the algorithms in uh, Ring. So that's really uh, nice for something like the quick current design of Stream Zero anyway, where um, you can then do the packet payload encryption separately without relying on the internals of the TLS stuff. I also made use of Futures Tokyo and H2. Uh, H2 is the HP2 implementation uh, based on Futures and Tokyo. Um, I had worked before with Futures in Tokyo IMAP, but it was relatively simple because they were just Futures that um, pulled their internal Futures uh, for the network and stuff. But um, I was looking at how H2 implemented their API of um, you know, how it exposes sort of the fake multiplexing that HTTP2 does to the uh, API user. And what they do is there's a streams object um, that's part of a connection, and they give a clone of that to the API user. And then uh, th if you uh, send some bytes through that streams object, the streams object will notify the connection and make sure it sends it off over the connection. So I'm... Uh, working on a similar design of the API for my implementation. Um, and it's, uh, I learned a bunch of new stuff about futures in Tokyo in the process. So that was fun. Uh, final crate that I used is Bytes Crate, which uh, has been around for quite a while. I stole an idea from... Hooray. Nice. Good. Um, I stole an idea from Russell's where it has a codec trait which uh, knows or provides an API for encoding and decoding types to bytes. Um, and I tried to, um, or I looked at how it was done in Russell's and also in other crates, and it, they were using the buff and buff mute traits. And that's a really neat way of sort of keeping track of where you are in a buffer um, and putting bytes in or getting bytes out. Um, so this is used for all the low-level encoding and decoding. And because Quick is trying to be very efficient about using bandwidth, there's a lot of details in the encoding and decoding for how to do like variable length integer encoding and that kind of stuff. Um, so there we go into the last section. Um, the goals for my implementation, so yes, uh, for the past two months I've been working on my own implementation of QUIC. Um, it's called QUIN. Um, it's named after a uh, character from a science fiction book, which uh, I've done with other projects as well. Um, the goals for this implementation were to first to implement the specification faithfully, uh, so we can fill up that interoperability matrix, um, which I'll just quickly show to you so you have an idea of what it looks like. Um, uh, second, to have clear abstractions and concepts so that there will be a good API. Um, I think earlier it was said that uh, libraries without or with 
with bad documentations aren't really that useful. Currently, there is no documentation yet. So in that sense, this is not a very useful library, but um, I'm trying to get score some points on interoperability before I get to documentation. Um, it's fully futures-based. There's no polling going on. Um, and I like to leverage the type system for all that stuff. Since we have this good type system, might as well make use of it. So there's no Booleans. It's all like enums that are, say, uh, the direction for this stream is uni or by die. And uh, instead of uh, having some kind of Boolean that says uh, false or true. I was really uh, satisfied with my 85% coverage until Tyler came along and spoiled all my hopes for that. <laughs> so now I'll have to do a bunch more stuff to make it better. Um, this is kind of a nice technique, I think, for figuring out whether the design for your code is good, um, to try to figure out if there's a nice layering in it. So on top, there's a client and a server. That should be pretty straightforward. And conceptually correct. Um, what I've done is put a connection state object in there. So because unlike in TCP, where typically your server is accepting connections and that gets a different socket for each connection, in Quick there's just a UDP socket and it's just there and you get stuff out of it. So for a server there's just one socket, but you have to manage a bunch of connections. So I've chosen to keep this connection state object separate and keep the socket in the client or server instead. Um, and that also is actually nice for testing because you can just sort of do all your protocol interactions without having to deal with network stuff. Um, then there's the parameters module, uh, which deals with the tra transport parameters. There's the stream stuff that has the streams object TLS. It's fully abstract in the sense that the rest of the implementation doesn't know about Russell's, but just deals with what's in that module. And then the, the rest of the stuff is basically about low-level encoding and decoding uh, types to bytes. Mm, current status of the implementation, I'm targeting draft 11 with TLS 1.3 draft 28, uh, as most implementations are doing right now. Um, draft 12 was released this week, so people will move on soon, but I think there's another interoperability event first, so for that event, people will mostly stick to draft 11. Um, the client, my client, the Quinn client, can handshake with other servers pretty good, pretty well. Other clients with Quinn server, not as well, um, because I made some simplifying assumptions that were turned out to be uh, not so interoperable. Um, most implementations don't have much in the way of actual quick HTTP yet. So they're just throwing HTTP one over one of the streams or multiple of the streams uh, in order to be able to test sort of the lower level bits of the protocol. I hope to keep this implementation moving forward. Uh, that depends a bit on my free time. Um, it is a big job because there's a lot of stuff to deal with. Uh, which you may as expect if you're sort of dealing with this whole um, thing that transfers bytes across the internet. Um, and it's not just doing the job of TCP, but also a, a sort of re-implementation of HTTP2. Um, so it feels sort of like fractal complexities everywhere you go into detail, there's more to deal with. But uh, I've just been taking it from the start of the connection and that's seems a workable approach. There's one other Rust implementation by Benjamin Saunders. Um, I had not found it when I started my implementation or I may have reconsidered doing so. Um, he uses OpenSSL instead of Russell's and I think he spent uh, way more time hacking OpenSSL to support the extra stuff or the OpenSSL bindings to Rust to support extra stuff than I spent on fixing Russell's. Um, so at some point I want to consider whether it makes sense to share more code. Um, he has a sort of networking less, less core and then a, a, a small Tokyo layer on top of it so it can also do Tokyo. And his implementation is currently more mature so it handles a bunch more stuff in that interoperability matrix. So if you are looking for a fun product, project to contribute to, then uh, consider this one. Um, 
I've put some issues in the repository, uh, even if you don't have much experience with Rust or networking protocols. Um, I'm happy to help you get stuff done. And uh, I'll be here it, at the conference for the rest of the uh, for the weekend and also the impl days. Or if you want to contribute some funding to be able to use this in a real setting, then I'd also be very interested in talking to you. Uh, that's all I have. Thanks. I.